Hey everyone, today we are going to be showing you how to use the count ifs function. Um, this is just like uh, the count if, but when you're looking to find the count uh, of data with multiple criteria, and we're going to take a look at how to do this with eights. So what we want to do is the first thing, uh, we have a couple data sets here that we're going to use. Uh, first example we'll walk through is t-shirt sizes and, and colors. And so again, very, very similar to the count if function. All you have to do is hit equals count ifs. I hit tab there. I'm just going to ask for criteria range one. So this is just asking for what data set do you want to look through in order to, to count the criteria. So we're going to go ahead and look at t-shirt sizes. So we'll hit control shift down arrow, select this entire column. And we're going to use this, uh, we're going to click and drag. So we'll go ahead and do an absolute uh, cell, reference cell reference for an absolute value. value. We'll hit uh, a comma. And so now it's asking for criteria. What, what criteria are you looking for? So we have a couple different options. We can go ahead and use quotation marks. Uh, we'll say Excel is what we're going to look for first. And then again, quotation marks. You need quotation marks if you're inputting text or else it, it won't properly pull it. And so we'll, we'll just move on here. Uh, we'll hit another comma. So now it's asking for criteria range two. So in the example we have, we have different sizes of t-shirts but also different colors so if we didn't have multiple criteria and we wanted to look up t-shirt sizes it would pull everything that is uh, just excel right but now we're able to pull the counts for the blue and green t-shirts for extra large what we can do here is for the second color range we'll click this this selection here and then we'll hit a four there and do another comma so a criteria number criteria two so again we can manually put in uh, let's say we want to find blue and then uh, quotation marks. And that's all we have is we just have these two criteria. So we'll do close parentheses, we'll hit enter. So it's giving us our, our count here. So two blue XLs and we can, we can kind of spot check. Okay, we have two XLs and they're both blue. So that, that checks out. But let's say you want a breakdown of everything. Like if you're wanting to place an order or something like that, what we could do, like if, if we were to drag this, it wouldn't work. So if I pull it, it's gonna just do the same thing because we manually entered in the data for Excel and for blue. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just delete that out, select Excel here, or this this uh, this cell, hit enter. And then rather than just manually enter blue, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the color here, hit enter. So now this is, is a dynamic uh, cell, and I can go ahead and click and drag. And that's gonna give us the the total count here. So so now I instantly know you know how many different t-shirt sizes and, and colors need to be ordered. So makes life a lot easier there. And this is a very small example that you could easily count, but um, for these larger data sets, uh, it makes it a, a little bit easier. So we have a row here of different employees and the group they work in and what shift they're on. So if we wanted to do a count there, we'll do the same thing. We'll do count ifs, uh, criteria range. We wanna know which group, what the breakout is by groups. So we'll hit control shift down arrow. And again, make that an absolute cell reference. Uh, for the marine comma. So rather than manually enter it again, I'm just going to automatically click the cell reference, which group I want. Again, if you did want to manually enter it, just do quotation marks, the, the value uh, or the text, and then quotation marks. So that's our criteria one that we're looking for. But now we want to know the breakout of day shift versus night shift. So what we'll do is we'll just click on the shift uh, in the, the data set that we're looking through, and we'll just hit control shift down there again. And then again, F4 uh, to make an absolute reference. And then we'll do a comma and then our next criteria. And so once we have that, we can just hit close parentheses. And this is giving us a count of all of the group one individuals that are working day shift. So now we can click and drag all the way down. And this gives us a breakout of who's working day shift, night shift, and in which group. So we can easily look at this and say, oh, we don't have anyone working on in group four on, on day shift. And so easily can see any discrepancies there and, and easily get that count. So the count of ifs function definitely makes counting uh, of the data very, very easy. What we're gonna do here, uh, look at dates. So if we're looking for uh, certain items that were above uh, or before or after a certain date, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We'll just get one example here uh, of count. So we'll do count ifs again. Uh, criteria range one, so we're going to look at item, control shift down arrow, uh, make an absolute value, criteria one, so we're looking for the Aspen item, and then we'll look for uh, the next criteria range, which is color, so we have red or orange here, so we'll hit control shift down arrow, absolute value, 
comma, and then we're going to click on the cell for the color breakout, and then we're going to hit comma, and now we can look at the date range. So we're going to hit control shift down arrow again, and then we're going to select what we're going to, we're going to do a couple things first before we do. Let's say we're going to manually enter a date. So let's say we want to look at some, anything that was sold on a specific date. So let's say we wanted on 1-29-2021. And then we're going to close parentheses. So we're going to manually enter that date, and we don't have any dates typed. So we'll do close parentheses, and it's going to show us we only had one item sold sold that day. If we wanted to, to search by uh, specific dates, I'm going to go ahead and, and make it so it's, we have a dynamic link here. So we're going to copy and paste this down. Uh, this is just for this the purpose of this exercise. So again, all you have to do is, is just manually type it in, remember the quotation marks, but we're going to go ahead and put it on here. And so we see that we didn't sell anything in the Aspen Orange on 115. Let's see if we sold anything on that date. Obviously did. So we sold an oak in the orange color and an aspen in the red color. So, so that's great there. But let's say we want to look up anything that was sold after a certain date. So what we'll do here is we're going to do count ifs, criteria range, items, make the absolute value. And then we are going to do Aspen. We want to look at what Aspen Red was sold after, we'll say 115. So we have our first criteria selected. We'll quickly do our second criteria there uh, in red. We're going to set a date range. All you have to do, and it's very, very easy. Okay, so we've entered, we have Aspen in red. What we're going to need to do is do the selected date range here. So we'll control shift down arrow, absolute value. But, but to enter this date range, it's very easy. All you have to do is hit quotation mark greater than, let's say 1, 15, 20, 21 quotation marks. And then we'll hit close parentheses. So this is going to go ahead and count anything that was sold after 115 in that Aspen and red color. We're going to go ahead and kind of show you some of the different things you can do with that. We're going to just delete the manually input data there. And then we're just going to select the cell here that we can play with. So it's going to give us a zero for now. But what we can do is we can just go ahead and enter some dates here and then just kind of play with that. So less than 1, 15, 2021. 20, so that will give us the count of everything sold before 2021. Um, what you can also do is you can do less than or equal to. So that will actually include 115. So you can see the number change there. So before it would have been 114 before. And this is saying 115 before. And you can do the same thing. I don't know if this will make a difference here, but but greater than 115, 20, 21. And obviously, so it looks like we sold a couple items on, on uh, 115. So that's all you have to do in order to uh, get the date range. And this way, like if, if you wanted to set something up like this, you could easily go in and say, you know, let's look at oak uh, and orange, and it will give you, dynamically give you uh, the different count of items that you've, that you've sold on any, you know, given date or date range. And, and you can do the same thing here if you were wanting to look at 128, for example, 2021. You know, we'll just uh, copy that, paste it down. So it looks like nothing was sold then. Let's see, we'll give a one, nine, copy that and then paste. And so it looks like we did sell one Aspen red item on that date. Count can be very, very useful and can save a lot of time if you go in and play with it. And there's, there's different ways to look at date ranges, which again, can save you a lot of time. So uh, please let me know if you have any additional questions on count ifs and, and comment below and let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see. And, and please remember to subscribe to the Excel guy. Thanks and have a great day.